Here in video 145, we're going to do a modified version of problem 6.3.5. We'll be deriving a general formula for forward rates. We first talked about forward rates in the last video, number 144. Then we'll use that formula to find some forward rates of interest given a term structure and to find a minimal spot rate that's necessary to guarantee a certain minimal forward rate. Problem is kind of intimidating looking as you look through it, especially part A. And part A is the new part, the modified part. Parts B and C are what's actually in the book, and in the book they are labeled as parts A and B. Let's just take it step by step here. We're going to use the borrowing and investment situation that I described in the last video, 144. I'll put a link to video 144 up there on the video. Um, I'll describe the situation again so you don't actually have to rewatch that video. To derive a general formula for what's called the n minus one year forward in the future one year period annual effective interest rate called a forward rate denoted by the symbol f sub the interval from n minus one to n meaning from time n minus one to time n based on a given term structure so that's the abstract derivation part the modified version of this problem then we're going to apply that in this parts B and C here, which looks like a lot to do, but it's going to go pretty quickly once we've got the formula from part A. Follow, the following term structure is given as effective annual interest rates of interest on zero coupon bonds. Those that have one year maturity have a 6% return as an annual rate, effective annual rate. Two year maturity is 7%, three year maturity is 9%. Based on that, do parts B and C. In part B, first we'll find a one year forward effective annual effective annual interest rate for a one-year period denoted by F sub 1 to the interval from 1 to 2 then a two-year forward effective annual interest rate for a one-year period F sub 2 3 then in part C we're gonna solve an inequality essentially the effective annual rate of interest for the four-year zero coupon bond is our four that would be what we call a spot rate that would be part of the term structure find find the minimum value of R4 needed so that this is true, where F23 is the uh, forward rate that was found in part B. And F34, this would be a, what's called a three-year forward rate uh, for the one-year period from time three to four. The, the three-year forward rate means it's in the future by three years. Okay, it's an interest rate that's gonna be effective in the future by three years. All right, so let's start by redescribing the borrowing and investment situation from the last video. So draw a stick figure here. You imagine this is you, and you are going to borrow money from a bank, say, and invest it in zero coupon bonds. So here's the bank, and here's your investment down here. And again, based on the scheme, uh, the investment really would be in zero coupon bonds. And we are again making the simplifying assumption that these um, these interest rates on zero coupon borrow bonds are the same as the interest rates on money you're going to borrow from the bank. And how are we going to borrow that money from the bank? Okay, well this is kind of a fancy investment scheme. It's exotic you might say. We're going to borrow that money from the bank and immediately invest it in the investment at time zero. But to keep it simple, we assume we borrow one from the bank. One at t equals zero, and we reinvest that money immediately, right away, in our investment. So at time zero, the net outlay is actually zero. You take in one dollar, say, from the bank, and you pay out one dollar to your investment. The forward rates are referring to interest rates for future investments, but we are making the initial transactions at time zero. Let's draw a number line here. So these transactions occur at time zero. You get one from the bank, but then you pay it out to the investment for a net outlay of zero at time zero. And then we wait, and it turns out the way we want to think about these things is we're going to pay back the loan that we took from the bank at time n minus one. And that essentially is going to be our investment. That's going to get paid back at time n minus 1. And then we wait, wait another year, and at time n we get the return on our investment in the zero coupon bond. How much are we going to have to pay back the, the bank at time n minus 1 and get from the investment at time n? It's based on the term structure, based on the spot rates. Again, we're assuming the, the 
loan rates for the loan that we take out are the same as the spot rates because it keeps things simple here when we initially think about this kind of thing. So here we're going to pay back what? We go to time n minus 1, it's going to be based on spot rate r sub n minus 1. 1 plus r sub n minus 1 is the growth factor. That occurs for n minus 1 years. We've got to raise that to the n minus 1 power at time n minus 1. So that's outgoing money negative 1 plus r n minus 1 to the n minus 1 power. But then we get the return on investment at time n from the zero coupon bond. We get 1 plus r n to the n power at time n. 1 plus r n to the n power. So again, the forward rate, the n minus 1 year forward rate, that occurs over, it's effective over one year period from time n minus one to time n. That is the interest rate that's in effect for that one year period. So it's, it's, the, it's the yield based on the situation. The investment amount, one plus r sub n minus one to the n minus one power has to grow to this thing. And the growth factor would be one plus this forward rate. And then we just solve this equation for the unknown forward rate, and we've done the derivation in part A. And it's a two-step solving process. First, divide both sides by 1 plus r n minus 1 to the n minus 1 power, then subtract 1. You could show the intermediate step if you like. The final answer is going to be 1 plus r n to the n divided by 1 plus r sub n minus 1 to the n minus 1 minus 1. Okay, there is your general formula, and you can find that in the reading of Broberman's book. All right, on to parts B and C, and these go pretty quickly here now that we've got the general formula, and we've got these spot rates here, 6%, 7%, 9%. We are given those. R1 is 0 0.06, R2 is 0 0.07, R3 is 0 0.09. We now use those to first find F12, this forward rate one year forward effective annual interest rate for a one year period. So in this case with F12, N is two. So we get one plus R2 squared over one plus R1 minus one using these numbers. That's 1.07 squared over 1.06 minus one. Quickly using the calculator, 1.07 squared divide by 1.06 minus one will be about 0 0.08009. Then the other one, F23, right there is the next thing we want to find. Two year forward rate for a one year period. Now n is 3, use this formula, it's going to be 1 plus r3 cubed divided by 1 plus r2 squared minus 1, that will be 1.09 cubed divided by 1.07 squared minus 1. Let's find 1.07 squared first. Store that in register 0, say 1.09 cubed. Divide by what's in register 0, subtract 1. This is approximately 0 0.13113. 3. And those are correct answers for those forward rates. This is part B, part A in the actual book. On to part C, which is part B in the, act, in the book. Uh, find the minimum value of R4. R4 is unspecified, so that this is true. We just found that quantity to be about 0.13113. Um, what is F34 going to be? Uh, once again, we use this formula. It's 1 plus R4 to the fourth power divided by 1 plus R3 cubed, which will be 1.09 cubed minus 1. Let's go ahead and do this as an inequality. We would like to find uh, the minimum value of R4, so that this thing is greater than or equal to F23. I'll go ahead and use the approximation here, even though this is not going to give us an exact answer. Give us close enough. Maybe I'll round R4 to just say three decimal places, or four. So now we just solve this inequality. It's not too hard to do. Uh, and none of the operations we do to isolate R4 are going to change the direction of the inequality because they're going to all involve increasing functions. Add one to both sides. So we get 1 plus r4 to the fourth power over 1.09 cubed is greater than or equal to 1.13113. Okay, 
the function x plus 1 is increasing, so the inequality stays, stays the same direction. Multiply both sides by 1.09 cubed. I'm showing more steps than perhaps I really need to. <coughs> Multiplying by a positive number keeps the direction of the inequality the same because a positive number times x is an increasing function. Uh, we need to take the fourth root of both sides, raise both sides to the one-fourth power, Raising to the one-fourth power, x to the one-fourth, uh, is an increasing function as well for x greater than or equal to zero. This is going to give us 1.09 to the three-fourths times 1.13113 to the one-fourth power. Finally, subtract one from both sides. x minus one is an increasing function. The inequality stays the same direction all the time. All right, and we'll just go ahead and approximate this. So we already have the 1.13113 in there, I guess, with more decimal places, so we'll get a better approximation that way. Raise this to the 1 4th power, 0.25 power, to get that. I'll store that in register 0. Uh, 1.09 to the 3 4 power is points, uh, 0.75 power is this, times what's in register 0. Now subtract 1. R4 needs to be greater than or equal to 0 0.1001 approximately. That is an approximate answer, uh, but it's going to be good to four decimal places. I'm pretty sure that'll be that should be fine. Yeah, I used more accuracy in my calculator as I went. So the minimum value you could take to be the smallest here is the 0.1001, 10.01%. For the answer to part C, the minimum value of R4, which would be the answer to part B in Broverman's book.